All right. So I'm Leaf. Uh, this is Hacking and Tracking Your Career. Uh, I was supposed to have a fantastic co-presenter, but unfortunately she could not make it. She is getting married to a very nice Elvis impersonator that she met yesterday. Uh, I'm Leaf. Uh, I've spent the last decade working in the security industry in a bunch of different roles. Uh, my last four have been in people management, both uh, kind of in security and software engineering. Uh, I'm very excited to be back here with y'all in Vegas. I always look forward to seeing friends and uh, meeting new people when I'm out here. And I'm currently an engineering manager at SEMGRIP. I also co-host uh, a podcast, 404 Security Not Found, which does monthly news and discussions. Anna is a former co-host as well. And before SEMGRIP, I worked at a company called SegMint, which sounds very similar, but is not very similar in terms of what the companies do, as an AppSec engineer, and then later went on to do a bunch of software engineering in the security space, and then became an engineering manager. Uh, you might have heard of SEMGRIP. We have a popular open source tool, but we also have paid offerings for static code analysis, software composition analysis, and secret scanning. And if you want to learn more about any of these, there's a variety of SEMGREP people in the audience here uh, that I got our CEO to say they had to come. And if you want to talk more, they'll, they'll be here. We also have a booth. So uh, that's the last you'll hear about SEMGREP. Um, the agenda. <clears throat> We are going to talk about how performance reviews work, how to prepare throughout the year, how to get recognized for your work, how to have ladder-based career conversations, and how to prepare for promotions. At the end of the presentation, you should hopefully have some new tools to help you get that next raise. The slides uh, are on this bit.ly link. If you want to take a picture of this, uh, that might save you from taking pictures later. Uh, it's HTYC for hacking, tracking your career. Um, also have this later in case you decide later that you want it. So raise your hand if you are an individual contributor. All right, uh, keep your hand up if you would consider yourself as early in your career. Keep, uh, raise your hand if you're interested in becoming a manager. Okay, few people. And uh, raise your hand if you're a manager right now. Okay, cool. Good mix. Uh, so this talk is for both individual contributors and managers. Most of my experience is as a first as a manager is as a first line manager, so managing other individual contributors. Although I do have a little bit of experience managing another manager. Um, for individual contributors, uh, these are going to be skills that are just going to help you throughout the year. Uh, and it's going to give you insight into how a layer above you, your manager's layer, operates. Managers need to be able to teach your team these skills, and then you also need to be able to apply these to yourselves because you are also growing in your career. Um, if you're a good manager, that's going to help your team because you're going to be able to get promoted and get more scope and more influence within your company, which allows you to uh, help out the folks on your team that are doing well. So uh, part of mine and Misha's philosophy is that you are responsible for a lot of your own career development, and it doesn't matter if you're an IC or a manager. Uh, part of your manager's job is to teach you these skills, help you stay on track, uh, collaboratively chart a career path, but they shouldn't be expected to plan your whole career for you. Things are pretty formulaic at most companies to go from an entry-level engineer into a mid-level engineer, but they get less so as you get more senior. And you need to be able to navigate these things yourself uh, autonomously as you level up throughout your organization. Learning to do these things independently is going to help insulate you from bad managers, changes in managers, and will accelerate your own growth. Nobody else is going to be with you your whole career, so getting to learn how to do these things yourself is really, really important. So uh, next I'll talk about some things that you need to prepare for throughout the year. Everybody's juggling a lot of things, and it's easy to forget the details of what you worked on a few months ago. And your manager is also going to miss things. They're not going to remember everything that you worked on, especially if, it, if it's a bigger team. When you're earlier in your career, they're going to be a lot more hands-on with the things that you're doing, but that isn't going to be the case forever. And you, it's a really good time early in your career to get in the habit of tracking your accomplishments. If you're not early in your career and you don't have this habit, it's never too late to start. 
Um, but make sure uh, that in addition to tracking the things that you're working on, that you understand how performance reviews and calibrations work at your company. If you don't know this, ask your manager. If your manager doesn't know, make sure that they figure it out and hold them accountable to telling you. Uh, ideally, they would be doing this proactively, uh, but if they don't, you should tell them to do it. So one of the most important year-round events for your uh, pay and your progression throughout your career is performance reviews. Um, most companies do these two times a year. Some companies do them one time a year. Uh, during full reviews, uh, you'll do a self-review. You'll get reviews from people that you work with regularly. These are called peer reviews. And then you'll also have a review from your manager. The manager reviews typically include a performance rating, meets expectations, exceeds expectations, something like that, um, as well as an evaluation of whether you're ready or not for promotion. You want to prepare for these, as I said, by taking notes throughout the year. And um, I included just like a quick sample of what a two review year might look like. You might have the first review period be January through June. This typically means that you're writing reviews and doing calibrations and things like that in sometime like July or August. And then uh, the work that you do between July and December, that's going to be review period two. And that's going to be uh, something that you would do the uh, mechanics of in January or, or February. Some places also do a promo only review. I think this is better than only doing one review a year because it gives people a second opportunity to get promoted instead of waiting six months. Um, I like doing full reviews twice a year, even though it's a lot more work for everybody involved, but I think that it is nice uh, for people to get more formal feedback um, on a more regular cadence, especially if they're on a team where their manager isn't doing um, more regular career conversations. So I've said calibration a few times. Um, calibration is when managers go over projects, ratings, and performance readiness for their reports. Uh, your manager is just going to be up there by themselves. You're not part of this. Um, managers can expect for their proposals to be stress tested by other managers. They might ask questions. Um, this is when ratings can change. So maybe your manager thinks that you got a meets. Maybe another manager thinks that based off of what they've said that it's below that or above that. I think it's actually a good sign when there's some disagreement amongst managers since it means that people are actually paying attention and scrutinizing proposals, as long as stuff is being applied fairly. Um, but I think it's actually bad if nobody's checking anything because then managers are just going to promote people. And if you have people that aren't ready for that next level and they're just getting promoted, it really causes a lot of problems in your organization. Make sure, as I've said, that you really understand how this process works because it's really important uh, and impactful to your compensation. After calibration, there might be an additional step where engineering leadership does a review of promotions. Your manager may be asked to create a promotion packet for the leaders of your company to look at. This is a great growth opportunity if you can work on this collaboratively. Not every manager will do that. It's not always possible for you to work on this, but I do think it gives you some really valuable insight into how your promo is being finalized. And it's also a good opportunity to make sure that you're being uh, represented accurately. So now that we've talked about some things that just kind of happen at a lot of companies, uh, there's a few things that you should watch out for and try to insulate yourself from. One is when your manager changes. This is typically something you're not going to have a lot of control over. I mean, maybe during a reorg, you can advocate for yourself to stay with them if, if you like that manager. But a lot of times, they're leaving the company or things are changing around you, and you're not going to have a lot of agency here. But one thing that you can do is make sure that you are tracking your accomplishments. This is a really good way to help onboard your new manager to the things that you've been working on. You can walk through your list of all the projects you've been doing the last few months. And then you also need to, um, oh, you might be tempted to think that your old manager is going to take care of this. Assume they won't. Sometimes they will, uh, especially if they're still at the company. But really, you should be preparing for a situation where they're leaving and uh, they don't do any of this stuff. If you're a manager, uh, try to take care of people on your team if they're changing teams within the company. If they're going to change to a new team, try to have a last career conversation with them if you haven't had one in a while and make sure that you document the things that they're working on, make sure that their projects and their, their lists are in good shape. This can really help them keep momentum towards whatever that next level that they're working on and is 
I would say doubly or triply important if they're close to a promo. If they're close to a promo, really try to make sure that you have some time to sync with their new manager. If you're leaving the company, this person might not be at the company already, but if you write up documents and share it with your manager, uh, hopefully they will take care of things and hopefully they'll share that with this person's manager. But um, I think you can really have a positive impact uh, when you're, you're switching to, to do this kind of handoff. Some things uh, can be pretty unpredictable, especially to individual contributors. Reorgs can happen suddenly. Sometimes they're painful, sometimes they're welcomed. Um, but uh, the best way to keep yourself on track is to make sure that you have a list of the things that you're working on. And uh, this is also helpful because as you get more senior, um, it's gonna be less straightforward for how you get promoted. And so having your uh, a plan in mind that your old managers bought in on uh, and that you're working towards regardless of whatever else is happening is a good way to make sure that you keep making progress. Planning docs and retrospective docs are a great way to help keep projects on track and reduce instances where you make the same repeated mistakes. These docs are pretty common in security and engineering organizations that are doing a lot of project-based work. Um, but they can also be really helpful for your career growth since they are a written record of the projects that you worked on. If you haven't written um, engineering docs before, uh, I think it's really important. It's a really good way to get good at technical writing, which again is another thing, the more senior you get, you need to be able to influence people throughout the company. Um, and especially with so many people working out of different offices or working remotely, uh, I do think that written communication is something that you really, really need to get good at. And then the earlier you start, the more practice that you'll have. So uh, once you've written down a plan for your work, now it's time to socialize your work with people that uh, are qualified to review it. This is just gonna make the project go better. I know it can be painful to get uh, you know, critiques on the designs and things like that, but I promise it's way more painful to have to go back and redo something uh, where somebody could have told you how to do it better up front. And so just make sure that you're getting uh, your plans reviewed by other people on your team or other people at the company that you know have experience in this area. If you're being asked to review things, make sure that you're uh, debating the idea, not the person. This isn't about being right. It's about helping you and your coworkers have the best plan possible to give you the best chance of success. If you have time um, to build in extra time into your plan for testing and supportability and metrics, that's something that can really make your performance reviews stand out. Um, I wrote a blog about this a couple of years ago, ago about some of the product uh, metrics that we have for some of the security things that we built at Segment. And uh, project retros, I know this is just like one more document that you have to write and a lot of people don't like doing these, but I really think that these are imp an important part of making sure that you don't make the same mistakes. And they're also a really good thing to look at um, when you're being asked to do your own self-reflections. If you haven't written a project retro, this is just a pretty simple uh, format that I follow. It's not something that should take a ton of time, but it is something that's pretty useful to have uh, in like a shared document store like Notion or G Drive or whatever. Once you've completed the doc, even though you might be a little bit vulnerable uh, in, the, in the document, like maybe there's some things that didn't go well, be honest about things that could be improved. Share the doc with your team. This is a really good opportunity for the people that you work with to learn from the things that went well as well as the things that uh, didn't go so great. If that sounds a little scary, uh, the benefit to you is that you have something that's just built in when you get asked that question that everybody hates about like what are your areas of improvement? Just go back to your old retro docs and look at the things that could have gone better in your projects and create some themes and now you just have a, a built-in answer to those questions. Another source of information for uh, your self-reviews or, or your peer reviews actually are quarterly team retros. I think it's a great time to look back at the things that you've done on a little bit longer time scale. Uh, sometimes if you just are doing project retros, it, you can be a little bit narrowly focused on like that project and not look at the themes that are either uh, helping your team or plaguing your team. And so doing something quarterly is helpful. For the teams that I manage, we follow a pretty simple format. I ask everyone to add what we worked on to the gray section before the meeting. 
Um, that just saves time and people, you know, that's usually the, the least exciting part is just listing what we worked on. And then I have people in real time populate uh, what went well and we'll add little plus one stickers so that people can vote on the things that they agree with. We'll spend some time talking about those and then we'll do the same thing for what could be improved. And then as we're going, we'll take action or we'll write down action items and learnings in the, uh, the blue square. Another thing that I found really helpful, especially as a manager, um, but I, I actually like wish I had done this as an IC as well, is I'd set some time aside to take some weekly notes. And I'll write notes about myself, about, the, uh, about my manager, about people on my team, um, or people that I work with closely, even if they're not somebody that I manage. Um, I just have a recurring calendar event on Friday to write down some stuff. It comes in handy when you need to write a lot of these reviews, especially peer reviews. I think a lot of times people are just like, oh shit, I worked so closely with this person, but like, what should I tell them? Um, this is a good way to avoid that. Sometimes I don't feel like writing notes uh, or I don't have time and that's okay. It's better to have some notes than to have no notes. Um, I found that this was really helpful when I was doing peer reviews for people because I just like could go back and look at stuff that happened throughout the, the quarter. Um, it's also a good reminder that if somebody did especially great work to drop a note to their manager, this kind of thing goes a really long way and I, I think not enough people do it. So uh, to wrap up this section, some year-round artifacts that are really helpful when you need to uh, do review writing is uh, your engineering design docs, your project retros, your team retros, and your weekly notes. Uh, I think the first three are just part of being part of a mature security or engineering organization, so you should be doing those anyway. But if you need some extra motivation to do a good job on those, uh, think about yourself. So I've talked a lot about writing down your accomplishments. Um, I call this a hype list. And this could be being somebody's mentor, it could be features that you've built, it could be changing a process, it could be giving a conference presentation, um, or anything else that you think is significant. It's better to just write down extra stuff and then go through and prune it out later if you're like, ah, actually that like didn't really matter. Um, but uh, if you're thinking, hey, you know, you're telling me to write weekly notes, you're telling me to do this hype list thing, like this is a lot of annoying stuff. Um, you know, the, I get it, the last thing you wanna do is like keep tabs on yourself and you might be thinking like, my manager knows what's going on. Um, that is probably not true. And if you make time for this a few times a month, uh, it's not that bad. I actually hate doing stuff like this, but once I got into the habit of doing it, it's, I promise it's not that bad. And uh, really the motivating factor here should be, this is an opportunity to make more money um, and get promoted. It's a lot easier to do those things if you've been writing down the shit that you've been doing rather than trying to remember it six months later. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, if you get a new manager, this is a really good way to onboard them so that when they show up, they're like, oh, this person rocks. They've been doing all this cool stuff. Um, I'm excited to work with them. So hopefully that got you convinced to do a hype list. I promise it's not that painful. I just use a G sheet with a few different columns in it. Um, the what happened is just a super brief summary of what you did. Assume the person that is reading it is at least like kind of familiar with your projects. Um, obviously this isn't going to be true if you're using it to onboard a new manager, but you should just walk them through the document the first time and they can just ask questions and it's a really good opportunity to just get to know them and ensure what you've been up to. Impact, I think this is the one that most people do a bad job on um, the, until they get some coaching. Um, think about what is the Im business impact of what you've been working on. Think about not just what you built, but why you built it or why somebody asked you to build it. And then this is a really good time to incorporate some metrics, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's a lot more impactful um, during calibrations and during performance reviews and even when you're just, you know, just operating within your company to be able to say, hey, I built this thing and it's used by 10% of our customers or it saved us money or it made us more money than just saying like, hey, I built this thing and just hoping that whoever is reading or listening to you is able to draw that connection between what you did and how it positively impacted your business. Um, so yeah, I would say think about these things a few times a month um, and, and just even if you don't add things, it's good just to get in the habit of thinking about them. Does anybody have a doc like this already? All right. 
other than you two people that raise your hand. Uh, start on one of these next week if, if you have some time. Uh, focus on the last six months. You don't need to go back forever. Look at pull requests, look at project docs, uh, look at your calendar to backfill data. If that sounds horrible, uh, just do the most recent project. It's better to just get started and keep tracking stuff going forward than to get bogged down and not do it and just like never have any of this stuff. Another thing that I think a lot of people uh, find uncomfortable is getting recognized for their work. This is not about bragging. Um, it's an important component of getting rewarded for your hard work. Uh, if people don't know you're doing stuff, it's hard for them to say like, hey, we should give this person more responsibility or more money or a better title or whatever. So uh, make sure that people know what you're doing. This helps your peers stay informed about what people are doing at their company. This can avoid situations where two teams start working on the same thing. Um, again, this is a good opportunity to flex your technical communication skills, which get more and more valuable the more senior you get. And then it's also a good opportunity for people to understand your areas of expertise. This can create interesting project opportunities, it can give you a chance to mentor people, and it also helps support you during calibrations. As I mentioned earlier, your calibration is when your manager goes and presents to a bunch of other managers. If those other managers are already familiar with your work because the people on their team know what's going on or they know what's going on, um, it's a lot easier for your manager to get their ratings and their promos approved rather than, oh, I'm trying to get somebody approved and like nobody has heard of any of this stuff and I have to spend extra time explaining why it's important. So some ways to share your work. Um, you can sign up for company demos. At SEMGREP, we do demos every Friday. This is a low pressure, low stress way to share what you've been up to. It doesn't have to be something technical. People demo uh, spreadsheets, people demo processes. It can be anything. Um, we also have a product updates channel where people post uh, updates um, about things that they're working on for our product. You can also post updates in your team channel so that people uh, can, can see those. We have a shout outs channel where people can just give public accolades to, to folks that have done some really great work. And then you can also write blogs and speak at events. I know it can be really uncomfortable for some people, uh, but you need to do it. It does get easier over time. And you might be thinking, should my manager be doing this stuff? And the answer is yes, they should. But you should also be doing it because it's way more effective if both of you are doing it than if just one of you is doing it. And there, in addition to that, there might be a time where you don't have a manager or they're too busy or something, and so having you do it is, is really important. Um, this could be a whole talk. It actually has been a whole talk uh, that I gave here at uh, B-Size Las Vegas last year, which I'll include a link to, but here's some just quick tips if you want to get started with blogging and speaking. Um, your outline serves as the basis for your blog or your presentation. Similar to your hype list, this is something that you can write over the course of months. Like when I'm working on a presentation, I just add notes. I don't worry about structuring them. I don't worry about it making sense to anyone but me. Um, but this serves as the jumping off point when you go to actually write that presentation or uh, submit to a conference. This content helps your team with recruiting. This gives folks outside of your company an opportunity to learn about the stuff that you and your team are working on. And somebody's gonna read that and be like, yes, that is something that I also wanna work on. Um, some of the best people that we had joined the last company that I was at joined and they would always cite the fact that we were giving presentations and, and blogging and stuff like that. If you're looking to get started, uh, a great place to start is with podcasts and local meetup groups. As somebody who's been a chapter organizer before, there's always a lack of people that are willing to give presentations. And a lot of times they're willing to work with people, even if they're first time speakers to help out. Some conferences like B-Sides also have a, a speaker mentorship program that you could check out next year. And then uh, everyone gets rejected. Uh, I got rejected this morning for OWASP SF, so it, it happens. Um, just keep applying to stuff and keep practicing and you will get, you will get a shot for sure. Um, and then don't forget to act the, add these activities to your hype list too. So if you wanna read about some stuff that I wrote about speaking and fostering a culture where, where people speak, I wrote a couple blogs about this last year. And then as I mentioned, I co-presented with Colleen Coolidge who is uh, the fantastic CISO of Segment. Uh, about these topics uh, here at B-Sides, and so you can check out the recording if you prefer to watch stuff. 
So hopefully uh, I see some of you up here next year. I love hearing about people submitting to their first conference. I had a few people that read the blogs last year reach out and say that they got accepted to uh, some conferences, which was really rewarding. So uh, yeah, if, you, if there's something you're on the fence about, just, just do it. The next topic is ladder-based self-reviews and career conversations. So ladders are an imperfect system, but they do help standardize levels within an organization. Without ladders, it's more likely that performance reviews are going to be influenced by time and role, vibes, and people being noisy about not getting promoted, which is not a very fair system. Um, and they also help with tying your work to a more widely accepted standard of what it means to be operating at a certain level within your organization. So just to be clear, when we're talking about levels, uh, these are some example levels that your organization might have. You might have like a, an entry level software engineer, a mid level, a senior staff. Um, different companies use different levels, but like these are some, some relatively common ones. Ladders are a great way to help set expectations for what people need to do to meet the standards of a given title and role. For example, senior security engineer. They're also a more objective way to get people aligned on promotion readiness. Uh, and if you haven't seen ladders before, check out progression.fyi. They have a bunch of open source ladders that people um, have posted from their companies. Intercom is on there, Circle CI is on there. So there's like well-known companies that have ladders. If your company doesn't have ladders, this might be an opportunity for you to bring them in, uh, especially if you're a manager, you could work with other managers to build them. It is worth noting that ladders are expensive or can be expensive to build and maintain. So a lot of smaller companies aren't gonna have ladders. You also might not have ladders for more specialized roles. You really need like some critical mass of people in a given role to have the maintenance and building costs of the ladders actually make sense. Um, as I mentioned, ladders can be a really good way to guide your career conversations. Um, <clears throat> you want to be on the same page about how you're doing performance-wise before the performance cycle. Uh, it's a really bad situation if you just like are completely surprised by uh, the ratings. Sometimes it can happen, you know, if somebody changes managers or like ha just hasn't had time to have a lot of these combos, it can happen. But if you've been reporting to the same person for a while, it's much better to have these conversations before performance review season. And you can actually use these to write your reviews. Your manager can use this information to write their reviews. So it's pretty helpful. One way to do this is you can deconstruct the ladders. So um, like two of these sections are impact and craft. And then there's different bullet points underneath these that you can do individual ratings for. You can make these more or less granular depending on how much time you and your manager have, um, but it's a good way to just have some structure to this uh, performance review process and, the, and these career conversations. This is a link from um, a blog that I wrote. Uh, you don't need to look at this right now, obviously, but just if you go back, uh, you can click this and see like what a deconstructed ladder might look like. Um, so when you're filling out the details, each row is a granular assess assessment for each point on like that section of the ladder. The first time that you go through this, it's naturally going to take longer because you or your manager doesn't know how this process works. Um, but after the first time, after you've gone through it, it should be pretty easy to go through this for future times. And you just need to do a delta between last time and this time. Uh, you don't need to go through and like do a full revamp every single time. Um, and you can fill it out collaboratively together the first time just so you kind of understand like what all the different rows mean and uh, you're on the same page about uh, like what the ratings are and that kind of thing. After that, I recommend filling it out separately and then copying in your evaluation at the same time as your manager so that you know, you're not just looking at theirs or they're looking at yours. It, it really does bias things if there's already some, some data in the columns. This is the rating system that I use just to kind of show some progression over time. Um, especially as you get more senior, you might not see a change in every single row. Uh, you might just not be working on the right projects to be making progress in certain areas, and that's fine. Uh, as long as you are making progress towards whatever the next level is, that is totally okay. You can spend less time talking about the cells where you basically both wrote the same thing and like gave yourself the same rating. 
and then spend more time talking on the cell, talking about the cells where you don't d agree. Um, if you are rating yourself higher than your manager, meaning that they think you're doing worse than you are and you disagree, I think one of the most productive things you can do is just brainstorm a way to improve a given category because as you improve, uh, their rating of you is gonna get closer to how you think you're doing. Um, I think this is better than just trying to like argue over the ratings. If you really think that they're misassessing something, like it can be worth it to try to convince them otherwise, but I think it's better just to try to improve in a given area. Um, it's also worth keeping in mind that generally for each row, you're going to need more than one example. You're not just going to go from like yellow to green because you did something one time. Especially as you get more senior, you need to be able to show you can do senior projects repeatedly. You're not just going to do one senior project and then get immediately promoted. If you're going through the ladders uh, and you find something confusing, you should give that to your you should give that feedback either to your manager or to whoever is maintaining the ladders. Um, these improvements are things that can benefit other people on your team, and so uh, you know these are living documents. These are things that that change over time. A lot of companies uh, use ladders for a pretty broad set of roles, so it is worth keeping in mind that even if it doesn't like totally apply to you. Maybe you're a full stack engineer. Maybe the latter also applies to SREs and security engineers. So there might be a like pretty broad cross section of people that are using the same ladder. Um, but on the flip side, if everything feels a little bit off, it might be worth it to actually make a new ladder. Um, again, there needs to be enough people benefiting from the ladder to have that make sense. But a lot of places do have separate ladders for security engineers versus software engineers. Another, uh, like this is more seldom um, because you're not gonna be getting promoted as many times as you're getting reviewed. But another thing that's useful to know how it works is the promotion thesis. Uh, promotion thesis or promotion packets, as I mentioned earlier, uh, can be part of the promo process. And they're either something that's presented during calibration or they're an intermediate step in between calibration and final approval. This is the promotion thesis we use. It's pretty simple. The first one is why now? What's changed between the last cycle and the current cycle? Uh, why this cycle instead of the next cycle? What's the case for promotion? How's this person already demonstrating that they're at that next level? Um, this is where completing a deconstructed career ladder for your current level and for your next level can be helpful because then your manager can show like, hey, these are the areas that they're, they're already demonstrating. And then what would be the case against promotion? Um, there's always going to be something that you know you're not doing at the next level, and the folks at your company want you to be successful, and they want your manager to have a plan to mitigate some of these areas. Um, and so it's better to just like be honest about how you're going to address these rather than trying to pretend like they don't exist. So um, now that we've talked about the template, here's some things that you can do to make sure that you're prepared for these. Um, try to work on a promo packet collaboratively. This might not be something that you can always do as a manager or as an individual contributor, um, but if you can work on this together, it just gets both of you more invested in the process and it shows people like how uh, this stuff works. And uh, as I mentioned previously, like try to do a deconstructed ladder for your current level to show like, hey, this person is exceeding, and then also do one for the next level to show that they're already meeting some of these like next level requirements. And then it's also worth keeping in mind, not all promos get approved. Even if you and your manager think you're ready, that doesn't mean that it's gonna survive calibration. Um, try not to get discouraged by this. I think as a manager, you need to use your judgment on whether or not somebody that reports to you is ready to know that they're up for promotion. Some people might take it poorly if they uh, you know, don't get promoted. But the way that I would think about it is, Typically, when a promo doesn't go through, you're going to get really useful information from the other engineering managers about why they didn't think you're ready. And then you can actually address that before the next cycle. And I've been in a lot of calibrations at this point, and you'll often hear things that were referenced last time of like, hey, this person's pretty close. They're not quite there. And then they'll do some stuff during the next cycle, and people will be like, oh, yeah, we said this was kind of what they needed, and they did it. And so I think it's actually helpful to get that info rather than uh, like not trying until you think you're like kind of guaranteed to get it. So uh, this one's for the managers in the room. Um, one thing that I do before calibration is I create cheat sheets for all the people that report to me with pre-written answers. Unfortunately, um, 
a big part of calibration is how good your manager is at calibration. And so having prepared answers for things uh, can just make you come across way more confident and uh, people like that. And so you're going to be able to do a better job representing your team if you just have stuff that's already pre-built and you can just answer it on the fly. Another thing you can do is get support from other managers beforehand. Um, I work with Misha, who was supposed to be my co-presenter, and I worked pretty closely with some of the people on her team uh, during a previous review period, and one of them was up for promotion, and she asked me beforehand if I would uh, you know, speak on this person's behalf, which I was, of course, happy to do. And it's really nice to have more than just the person's manager talk positively, because it, that's just going to help make sure that things get, get approved. So some closing thoughts. Uh, take steps to own your own career development. Nobody's going to be with you uh, your whole career. And so it's important that you can uh, play an active part in directing your path. Make sure that you know how this stuff works at your company. Even if you've gone through it before, things change, companies grow, companies get acquired. So make sure you know how it works every single time. Uh, if your manager doesn't know how it works, make them figure it out and tell you. Uh, if your company uses career ladders during calibration, make sure the first time you're hearing about them is not uh, during performance season. Go and look at what is in your ladder. Make sure you're having convos with your uh, manager about the ladders, how you're doing relative to them. Document your, uh, your progress and setbacks throughout the year. This makes writing reviews a lot easier for yourself, uh, the positive and the negative. And then lastly, celebrate wins, whether they're your wins or your coworkers' wins. Make sure that your work's visible. Make sure that you're recognizing other people for their uh, contributions to your company. And make sure that their manager knows that you think that they're doing a great job. So um, that's it. I'm happy to take some questions. I'll also be at the SEMGRUP booth for a little bit after this. Um, there's a link to the slides. Uh, the Substack link also has a blog that I wrote about the same topic uh, maybe like a m couple months ago. So if you want to just skim through that on, on text form, it's there. But um, yeah, thanks for attending and uh, happy to take questions.